That's an inside joke for people at 5,000 trophies. <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay, here we go. Uh, Odyssey on the top, backstab on the bottom here. And I said the backstab has a great story, and I want to touch on it very briefly here. He was actually a semi-pro soccer player for a while, tore his ACL, actually dealt with depression, which is something that, you know, we all deal with, I've dealt with. But what came, what, what got him out of that depression? A lot of it was this great Clash community, getting, really putting a lot of his energy into these games, into his competitive clan, helping manage things over there. And he's really, you know, really enjoying life now and obviously very successful. Yeah, he can't be depressed with that opening push at all. The first 50 seconds of the game, he's already got a 1,400 damage lead on his opponent. And you see Elite Barbarians, again, we're seeing them, and they are really the story of this entire entire matchup here. I mean, every single match on Moe's has included those Elite Barbarians. They're better, faster, and stronger, Rum. And that's what killed Odyssey. He played his bowler in the right lane and backstep, saw that weakness, said, okay, with, with, with bowler off the board, it's not in his hand, I'm going for it. Absolutely. And charged the left side, and that's how it was so successful, was that the counter card, one there. It is tempting to play bowler early on in the match. It's tempting because it's a slow unit. You want to play those slow units early on. That way you can buy more time and build that elixir advantage, but it's also dangerous because you can be susceptible to those opposite lane pushes. The crowd's getting excited because a big push is brewing here. We've got a bowler in each lane, and I'm sure they're not just going to duel heads up. Look at this, opposite lane push. Oh, and the bowler again is out of his hand. An inferno tower here, so audacity again. Audacity. How many times is that? The audacity of Odyssey. The audacity of Odyssey. <laughs> Playing the inferno tower. How dare he? But no, the Inferno Tower and the Bowler, again, a very good one-two punch defensively. They can really stop a lot of pushes, and you saw it in action there. We see the weakness of the Bowler. Any air unit can attack it without being attacked back, and a single minion does enough to keep that Bowler from swinging on the tower, and great defense by Backstab. So Backstab, again, kind of looking like he's going to keep attacking both towers and, and make yes. Odyssey choose. Oh, is he gonna we got defend? a graveyard! And that was a good... And the Bowler is not a great not a graveyard. Great. It has a very slow hit speed, a 2.5 second wind up to roll that ball and it may not even kill that many skeletons. Look, it's getting killed right now. Yeah, so the, he loses a bowler in that and he takes a lot of damage to his tower. So definitely not the best counter there, but a graveyard of his own for Odyssey in the right lane. Kind of trading this graveyard combo. And Backstab is showing textbook Graveyard defense. defense. He played one minion, and when he saw the fireball in the air, he started to cast the archers so that as soon as the fireball hit, kills minions, the archers are already there to pick up the slack. And you know what? I gotta say, I'm surprised we haven't seen one player use like uh, use an air deck here. Use a lava. Oh deck. no! And here we go. This That's is it. Take it. Is it. That's oh, it. No! 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 None of them hit. The okay. archers are able to hold it off, but so right, a fireball or zap to take it off. There's only eight seconds left until overtime, and this is this is going to be trouble here for Odyssey. And there's the fireball. And not enough time here for that graveyard, and Backstab takes it, man! Game wow. one of the finals goes to Backstab on the back of the great graveyard play. <laughs> They're gonna say the back of Stab. The back good of, one, Rum. The back of Skeleton Stabs. Let's check in with Kelly, who's on the floor with BBXH and Galadon. Nice one, Romham, the back of stabs. Yes, I am here with BBXH and Galadon. Now, you know, going into these tournaments, you don't always know what your opponent's going to be building. What are two cards that you always put in your deck when you enter a tournament? Well, I would say the graveyard, but I don't have graveyard yet. So my choices would be the archers. As we see today, a lot of people have archers, and they're so versatile of what you can use them for. And I think I'm going to have to say elite barbarians, going back to them now. They are playing a big role today, so I think that would be my second choice. Especially after that buff, right? Now, Galadon, to all the people watching at home and to the people in the audience that want to be a pro Clash Royale player, what can they learn from these players up here? Well, these players are really taking strategy to the next level. I mean, really just some next level thinking. But the one thing that I think that people can pick up from this is value. Uh, you see the fireball when they drop a fireball. You'll never see a fireball drop on a single unit or a single group of units. It's all about grabbing value for cards like that. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. And everyone, we are getting back into the second game of the Grand Finals. Let's head back to the casters for game two. Well, Ash, this might be the last time that we really uh, get to talk and cast another game. Hug this it might up, be man. the last. Let's hug good it job, up. good job. So let's man. think about this. Good, you do well. Graveyard, Elite Barbarians. The story of the day has been these two cards. Absolutely. We know how to counter Graveyard, not a surprise Archers, either. Minions. Yeah, not a surprise. How do you counter these Elite Barbarians? Elite Barbarians are tough. First of all, you have to be ready for them, right? Fast. So having that defensive structure is a help, but it's not necessarily enough because even if you have an Inferno Tower, it's not going to be enough to stop the Elite Barbarians. They swing so fast and move so fast, they can be a lethal card, and that's why everybody's playing them. Really, like the Classic Barbarians would stop Elite Barbarians, but no one's playing the Classic Barbarians. That's why they're just, they're just very difficult, absolutely. Yeah. And that's how the meta changes, you know? People start to play, everybody starts to play Elite Barbarians, the game shifts, and you see this between every single balance update. The, it's not 
not like the game stays the same and the meta stays the same. People, trends start to develop and then people start to counter those and then the game kind of changes from there. Mm -hmm. And then not too long, there'll be a new card, the Executioner, which I think would be great against both Graveyard and Elite Barbarians. Can't wait for that one to come out. Absolutely. Our players are ready. It's time for what could be the final battle, the battle that determines their fate. $15,000 on the line, the Crown Duel Trophy. Everything could come down to this. It's the finals, battle number two. Ready, set, battle! Jumping into the game, Backstab has a huge contingent of fans here. You can hear the crowd chanting, Backstab, Backstab. Absolutely, and Backstab has a large contingent of fans at home. He, he is a streamer on Twitch, so guys, if you want to see this high-level gameplay, check him out. Yeah, know? absolutely. Odyssey is a coach on Mastery GG, so if you want Odyssey to teach you how to play better Clash Royale, you can always check him out on that side and hire him as a personal trainer, just like Robin Al. <laughs> That's absolutely... He might be a little bit less aggressive, but no, who knows, right? <laughs> I mean, he seems... He's a very polite Canadian, but I'm sure he has a Dark side I'll tell you what, though, Backstab got pumped up that last win, man. He was fist pumping, dancing around the stage. I mean, he has a lot of energy, and he's, he's playing a beat down deck. We're seeing a lot of beat down. Again, the giant combination, but some people might see oh, the, the bowler combo. So, a lot of things going on here at once. But the giant, even though he runs into the Inferno Tower, it's not necessarily a lost play because this, the graveyard has an opportunity to lock onto that tower, and look how much damage he wow. did there. In the first push, less than a minute into the second game of the finals, Odyssey finds himself over. Only a fireball and a zap away from losing that top left tower. It's up to him to mount a very serious offense. Backstab, though, finds himself in a great position. When you know that the enemy tower is dead in the water, you can just play pure defense. Backstab doesn't have to cast another giant. He doesn't have to cast another graveyard. He can sit back behind his mega minions, archers, and spells and try to ride out the next minute 45. Absolutely, and great players will do that. Not only will they try to build those small elixir exchanges, advantages throughout the first two minutes, and then try to really capitalize on them right before uh, it gets to double elixir time, but also, just like you said, play defensively. No need to rush things. Even if you're coming from behind, there's plenty of time left. Oh, oh I think that giant was an accident. Oh, the Skeleton Army does come down. The Skeleton Army is going to be a great counter deck because, of course, you're putting graveyards worth of skeletons on the field. All Absolutely. Absolutely. Gang up on the ones that show up. And, and, and if Odyssey had a zap spell, it would have been great there on that on that Skeleton Army, but he doesn't. He has the log, and he probably didn't have it up right there in his rotation. And even if he did, the log doesn't reach that far behind the tower, right? Yeah. Unlike Zap, which could be cast anywhere, log can only be cast at the river and has a set distance for it. It goes. Absolutely. It goes to the side of the towers, but not all the way behind. If you're going to play a surprise graveyard against the enemy's tower and you want to log combo it, you're better off playing it a little bit ahead so it's in that log range. And there it oh, is. Oh, there's the fireball. He's setting up. Now he's going to need another fireball. A zap's not going to do it, but a single fire spirit or even another fireball could win this game. But of course, Odyssey with a graveyard could turn this around any moment and take a tower. What I would do if I was backstab here, just keep placing that Inferno Tower a little bit in the left. And eventually one of those fire spirits will probably get through, take down that left uh, tower, I save the fireball. Right. But he goes in the right instead. Oh, here comes the archers are already down, which means the graveyard doesn't have uh -oh. the best counter on the field. He drops the skeleton army, a fireball, fireball. to fight it. And it does, it locks on. Those skeletons are building up. Another uh set of archers comes out. Wow. He was able to cycle all the way back to the archers. And the crowd's getting hot. They understand that Backstab is very close to winning this game. This is 15 it. This seconds until it. the end. And all Backstab has to do is not die. Little fireball. 10 Little seconds. Fireball. Nine, eight, eight, seven, six, five. For some, for some live recap of what's going on on that stage. Let's go Ends! The $15,000 winner! Confetti everywhere. He's going crazy. That's right! All right, clear out of here. Good job. The first North American champion of Clash Royale, the ruler of the dueler, Backstab. Wow, what a guy. I mean, this is incredible. And look at this oh, stage. Man. Let's go to the stage here. Congratulations, congratulations. Congratulations, $15,000. And he got the trophy that's amazing. Yep. Uh, this is it. Hold it up. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I'm Al Magical. This is Chris Fairbanks. Keep I'm it going for Kelly. And I'm Rob Cordry. This has been our most ridiculous duel. Thank you for watching.